part 3 of Jabersport covers the final 6 kilometers. If you intend driving this pass, it's very important to watch parts 1 and 2 first, which include information on historical, safety and technical. Montague lies between the Casey and Kingna rivers that join west of the town. In the 19th century, the only western exit was through Kochmans Kloof. Passage required that the river had to be forded eight times. Strong teams of horses or oxen were required for the trip, as carts and wagons were often stranded there. In the early days, the trekkers often followed the course of the rivers. On one occasion, the wheels of a trekker's wagon became stuck in the rocks of the riverbed. In his efforts to free the wheel, the trekker's hand was so badly injured that his party was obliged to pitch camp near the present-day Montague. They drank the clear, strangely flavoured water and found it to be wonderfully refreshing. They then traced its course through the cliff where they discovered the hot springs. The injured hand, bathed frequently in the warm water, healed miraculously. News of the healing water soon spread and sick people visited the springs from everywhere. A mail coach transported the post between Ashton and Montague and its arrival was always a special event. After the tunnel, which was built in 1877 by Thomas Bain, was completed, a decent road was built through Kochmans Kloof and other roads soon followed. Building of the now popular Montague Baths started in 1857. Disaster struck in 1981 when a major flood swept away the entire baths complex. The hotel has since been completely rebuilt. The British Secretary of the Cape, John Montague, began his public career as an army officer and was present at the Battle of Waterloo where Napoleon was finally defeated. Montague was an able and conscientious young man whose talents were recognized by the colonial office when he entered civilian life. He was first posted to Van Diemen's Land in Tasmania as civil, military and private secretary to the governor. He was appointed as colonial secretary of the Cape of Good Hope in 1843, specifically charged with reducing its debt, which he did skillfully. He had the intelligence and imagination to envisage the potential of the Cape, but realized that it could not develop without efficient transport and communications, and their provision became the focus of his attention. Aided by pioneering road engineers Henry Fancourt White and Andrew Geddes Bain, he punched passes through the mountain barriers with the aid of convict labor and expert stonemasons. Through his efforts, the country developed rapidly. Farmers and businessmen rejoiced and the amiable but overworked Montague became a popular figure. As a tribute to his services, the tiny village known as Achter Kochmans Kloof in the Langeberg was later renamed Montague. His health finally failed and he left for England in May in 1852. He died in Brighton, England a year later. From the ninth kilometer, the valley widens once more, which marks the end of the farming zone of the port. This final part of the port gets quite dramatic as it narrows down towards the southwest. Montague is well known for its frequency of floods and here in this convoluted port the evidence of the power of this little river is evident. On the right hand side of the road about a hundred meters off the remains of a breached concrete dam wall can still be seen today. Deep scars and washaways along the sides of the river indicate a raw power which can't be controlled. Towards the 12th kilometer, in the narrowest part of the port, there's a wide junction. The left-hand option provides a cross-link to the foothills of the Langkloof. Keep right and follow the road around the final big right-hand bend as the last farm appears on the left. The road straightens out and descends directly into the northwest towards Montague. The pass ends here at the 12.6 kilometer mark at an altitude of 239 meters continue through the township and watch out for the big speed bumps to reach the R318 three and a half kilometers further.